just fucking felt special. This was a great script, a great team, a great story, great actors all together, and it was a, an amazing experience. And I'll never forget, you know, well, of course I won't freaking forget it, but you know what I mean? It was, wasn't it, wasn't it, guys? Am I telling the truth or yeah, what? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> That's my turn. And Tori, how did you get involved? Yeah, I like William. I saw, you know, a breakdown for it and I kind of had a similar experience. I was like, this seems like something I could sink my teeth into. And so I submitted myself for it. And then I got to do a pre-read and I came in with like two scenes. And Melissa was there and job somewhere and you know, I did my first read scenes. Melissa seemed really impressed. She seemed like she really took me, but you know, it's had more of a poker face. So I couldn't really tell what he was doing. <laughs> Melissa was like, you know, excited and saying like, keep in touch. And, I mean, there's been some times that I've heard that and then I've literally heard about the call back and then not got a call back. So I was like, yeah. okay, well, we'll see if I ever hear from this again. And then some time passed and then I was shopping in a Target and I got a phone call and it was Saba. And she said, so it's down to you and another girl and I'm sending you the full script. I want you to read it and pick two scenes and come in and do them for me. And so I just had a full week before the audition, just like completely delving into the script, getting like so prepared. I was like never prepared for an audition more than this in my whole life. I was like, so into it, I have to get this. And I went in and I did it and it went great. And Sabas and I, we talked about the script. And then Sabas was me the job right there on the spot. And I just broke down crying. I was so excited because I'd never been offered a role like that in the room. It was like, like really <laughs> a magical experience. <laughs> so and, and then later on, I found out Sabas told me that there was another girl in the in the callback process, but it was actually just me, and he wanted to see how well I could break down the script. And I thought that was brilliant. Uh, I was like, oh, hey, like, what scenes this other girl going to choose? And like, what can I do to be different? And like, trying to you know give it my all. And it was so funny that he just told me that, and there wasn't even somebody else. So that was the process. For me. He's kind of stressed. He does this. He also told me it was an RDP. <laughs> no, I didn't know our producer by the way. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. It's a good Dimitri, you are the only one. <laughs> you know, I, I still I still find myself saying every now and then, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> I do it I do it to my kid getting her off to school. Okay. Hey, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> what so this is from backstage. I just wanted to let you know that we had a little snafu live button, and the audience is now joining us 15 minutes late to the mic technical snafu. So we have to go back and introduce where you're from so that the audience really gets a flavor for that. My apologies, but hey, it's a <laughs> So everybody, we're gonna, for those of us that are just now joining us, welcome. This is Jim with the Nevermore Film Festival, and this is the live stream with uh, Catherine's Lullaby. I believe the audience has caught the last five minutes, according to the Fantastic. time we're here on the thing. The, so they have, the party has already started. Has already started, so we had some te technical difficulties, everybody, but we are live. But welcome, we're here. well, come on in. Come on in. Have a seat. So, for those of you that are just now joining us and who those of them have been waiting for the last couple of minutes to get in, welcome. Uh, all you've really missed at this point was just the introductions. I think I think we went live right as William was started to talk. So we're going to go back and recap a little bit. Uh, let's start off with the director, Savas Cristo, who is right Whoa. here. Hey, Savas. <laughs> for those of you that already know her, the lead actress is Tori Caustic. Hi. Lead actor is William Kircher joining us from New Zealand. Hi there. Hello. <laughs> Kiora. The composer is Demetrius Mann. Demetrius. Hi, hey. I'm from Los Angeles. <laughs> the producer is Melissa Gutierrez. Hello. Hey. And the director of photography is Manuel Velasquez. Hi. And Manuel, you're in Boca. Did you say Colombia? 
Yeah, in Bogota, Colombia. Yeah. In Bogota. Hi. So everyone, we're just gonna. Uh, we've already started a little bit of the conversation, but you know, let's just keep it going. We were having a great time. Tell me, yeah. tell me some of the funny stories that happened uh, behind the scenes that was going on while the film was being shot. You know, actually, having heard everybody's stories, I wanted to share the story of how I got to meet Savas. It was actually on a different panel where I was talking about film and music. Mm -hmm. And then Savas had a question, and his question was, can you have a film, can you make a film without music and without a composer? <laughs> so he did give me a hard time a little in the very beginning. And I think maybe one of the reasons why he chose me, because I was the only one who actually said, yes, you can make a film without uh, music. And one of my favorite films, actually, Deliverance, has no score besides the uh, dueling banjo scene. So we got wow. to talk after that, and I guess, you know, we figured things out, and I was able to change his mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. Because uh, the, the whole time, like, since for production, he was saying the, 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 the movie is not going to have sound. He <laughs> sends me the first rock song, and I'm like, wait. What? I remember that. <laughs> I'm hearing music. What is it? <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> Process. So it was not going to have a score. It was not going to have sound. What was that? Score. Well, initially, I wanted to make a, a very uncomfortable movie with you know no music, only the the sound of you know uh, sound effects and all that stuff. But then I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> now, Tori, I've heard William talking about something that happened on set involving a vase. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. We do. We did have, we have a scene where uh, it's like a fight scene, and we have this prop vase, and I'm supposed to pretend to hit him over the head with it. But uh, about on the third take or so, <laughs> <laughs> I accidentally really hit him in the head with it, and it shattered, and it looked great on camera, but it was not supposed to happen. What a surprise for both of us. <laughs> it was really, really funny. It really, it was insane, actually, because the vases were made especially to break, but... They were made to break against walls, not against heads. <laughs> so that said to me, typical freaking director. <laughs> said, oh, we got the wrong vases. We they they're ones that only or Melissa, you might have said it. They're only made to break against walls. We because we didn't get the thin sort that you could break against your head. And then Tori was doing it, and we had the camera on, but at a kind of a different angle. And she really connected, and it really freaking hurt. But I was really excited because finally we got this. We really got something that was quite special. And then we set it up as a stunt and yeah. really broke on the back of the head. And that freaking hurt as well. Tori? So I was really so scared. Hurt. I was really scared that moment. <laughs> you know, actor down. <laughs> Law, lawsuit. <laughs> You'll be hearing from my lawyer. Young man, we have someone in. It was, it was nice. great. <laughs> we have someone in the comments saying, "I thought the way you use sound in this was extremely effective. It conveyed her anxiety and fear, and dropped off as soon as you realized that there was no buildup. I thought it was excellent." Yeah, and that's a oh, good uh, time to mention Java the mommy, the editor, and the sound. Uh, Designer, he's fantastic. He he was gonna be here, but he couldn't. So thank you, Javad, if you're listening. <laughs> so on location again, going back on location, was that one house that you shot with that you filmed in? Was that something you found, or was that something that one of you guys lived in, or a friend of the family? How was? Where did you? That was an excellent location, by the way. Yeah. Uh, we took like how many trips, Melissa? Five? Like five trips to Brightwood. Um, yeah. Looking at every single house that you can think of. Um, finding really interesting people. <laughs> you know? 
and finally we found one and we were very lucky i think that like every single piece of Catherine just like worked together like i'm a believer and i think that everything just worked perfect and you know like the, the owner of the house was like yeah, let's do it and the deal for it it was like half the we were leaving as a crew too. so it was the location and our house so it was very interesting to have the whole crew leaving together so it was like it's like a like a reality show uh, creating a movie and also like a movie in the crew because it was kind of some tension there sometimes um but yeah interesting <laughs> it was um it was i was it, the, one of the most exciting things was that um oh look because what i said earlier and i'm going to reiterate it's true sometimes you do a project where everything just kind of magically comes together. And that is actually centered usually around somebody like Savas who can pull a, a, a team together. And the house was incredible as a location. It could not have been more perfect for the movie. The big fence all the way around it, it had the size and the, and the house became a character in the movie. That's which true. is actually just fucking fantastic yet again so that so thank you and melissa for finding that place it was an amazing beautiful manuel how difficult was it to shoot on location then no this is actually amazing because um i'm very used to this kind of shooting style to shoot on location i did a lot of documentaries in my starting so it was great I, I really prefer to shoot in location most of the time. It's a very beautiful place. Very like the um, the texture of the walls is very dark, so it goes very well with the movie. And it's a huge house. Like it has yeah. so many rooms that you like. Of course, we con like we condense everything to make it look, you know, like it was just like uh room and then uh her dad on like the, the basement but like that house had like a huge like playground uh where all the crew was like playing and like they were like hanging out like they had like a huge yard where everyone was like playing soccer yeah um, so it was a great location and a great living place yeah that was we a shot. part playing soccer after the rap every day. That was so fun. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't fun when they broke the window. Yes. A free and go into the window. That was and <laughs> lunch times. And lunch times. Yeah. <laughs> lunch times I missed a nap though. Get a good nap in during lunch. <laughs> Hey, we shot the hell out of that house, didn't we? <laughs> we used that house. Yeah. By, by the way, I do have a lot of selfies with you guys sleeping. <laughs> I've seen some. <laughs> Someone's asking, how long were you in the house for? Uh, we shot uh, 18 days and we were like three weeks there. Three weeks. We had two days of prep and then one day of prep. So 21 days in the house. Javier mentions here, writes, the house was definitely key in the story and all the surroundings. The location was a total hit. Hey, Javier. Shout out to Javier, he's our script supervisor. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and we had that one pool table in it, so we got to have that little wrap party after. That was super fun. In the frat house, as we called it. <laughs> <laughs> well, watching the film, there's a lot of physicality involved in these roles that you guys had to go through, both, you know, the entire cast. What was that like to go through all of the running and all of the, I mean, there was just so much physical action happening throughout that film. Tell us a little bit about that process, Tori and William. Yeah, it was definitely a lot of running for me. <laughs> so before <laughs> I shot it, I was, you know, working on my running, trying to get in shape and be ready for it. It was my first time working with the coordinator with our uh, stuff with Stanford. So that was a new experience for me. But yeah, it was exhausting. I didn't expect it to be so like physically draining. Like it's kind of the thing where like 
your mind knows you're acting, but your body doesn't. And so every day I was just like, oh, <laughs> but it was definitely worth it. I spent a lot of time pretending I could run <laughs> and then recovering from <laughs> there was a lot of things it, the thing is that it's it's once again the spirit of something like this because it's a bit like making a kiwi film actually and so uh, because you're such an intense little team tori and i went to places that normally i've worked with actors and tori thanks to you darling because you are a fabulous actor that throws yourself into the role some people would go oh no don't do that you know don't i might get hurt you know but Tori and I, we just threw ourselves into it. We were just so bloody into smashing each other up. <laughs> I am falling, really... falling and doing it for real. We loved it. <laughs> yeah, I was really lucky as a director having these two guys. Like, it was amazing, guys. Thank you. <laughs> we just wanted to go there, you know. We, went, we just saw and we just thought, you know, Okay, you fall over, you get hurt. Uh, it, you know, no, we were careful, and we had a stunt guy there, and all that kind of carry on. But it, it was just a matter of, wasn't it, Tori, of just actually doing. We were immersed in those roles, and we yeah. weren't gonna, we weren't gonna screw it up. Yeah, we weren't holding anything back. We're like, let's just do no, it. No, <laughs> this was the thing. This was yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Well, Kevin Marshall writes in and says, "Praise for William Kircher for nailing." The alternately protective slash paternal and unhinged yeah. slash inappropriate aspects of Evan. And Thank that laundry much. room scene Great. will forever give me the creeps. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, when I first saw the film, I was so enamored with William's performance. Like, I knew working with him, that was great. but when I got to see his character arc, like, all the way through, it was so seamless. I was just like, wow, this is amazing. Oh, thank you. I yeah. haven't even seen oh, it. But <laughs> I... I, oh, that's what I wanted to say. What I want to say is, and I keep, I know I keep going on about this, but back then when we were making that, I could see what we are doing right now. I had a feeling, and so did Tori, actually. We all had a feeling that this is going to be something special, you know, and I haven't seen the film, but the reactions from people at seeing the film are just everything that we could have hoped for making that movie in that house of people really becoming immersed in the film and and seeing Savas's dream come become real and uh it was you know so i'm looking forward to seeing it, <laughs> <Can I watch? laughs> it. <laughs> and tori congratulations on your nomination for best actress Thank you, so much. Oh, yeah. you bet you better get it because we all need the money <laughs> <laughs> So a question, question for Tori, and this comes in from a viewer. I know this is a very difficult role that you've had in the past. Was this a hard transition for you? Well, at the start, it was definitely overwhelming, you know, to be number one on the call sheet, like my first lead in a future film, like this is it. Um, but we had a really intense rehearsal process for a few weeks before that definitely got me prepared. And I found that Savas really involved me in the process in a way that I hadn't been before where it's not just like me yes anding, like I'm here and I can bring my own ideas and opinions and thoughts to the table. So it was like a new sort of collaboration that I really got to step into and that's what was different for me. And William, for yourself, I mean, you've come from some huge films with the Lord of the Rings trilogy and so many others. I mean, you've gone from, you've gone from one side of the spectrum to the other in your career. What was it like shooting this particular film? Well, I've, I've already said most of it. Yeah. I just absolutely loved it, every inch of it, because it called on the intensity of working in that house for three weeks, called on your absolute experience as a person and as an actor. It really gives you a chance, that intensity, to discover something. And right from the start when I spoke to Savas, right from um, our early conversations, we, I, I just knew he was uh, he was going to magic. He just had, um, you know, I looked into his past and saw he won all these awards, and I think this fucking guy has got is going to go places. And the script, right from the start, you know, everything was just felt right. 
And so I just, um, it was a great experience. I mean, being in the freaking Hobbit was an amazing experience, amazing four year experience, but sometimes it doesn't matter about the size of the film. It's to do with the, and it's not to do with the money either, luckily. Um, <laughs> it's to do with the, you as an artist being able to explore, working with such lovely, lovely, talented, incredible people that are all completely focused. The chance for Tori and I to play and look into each other's eyes and really, really delve and play into those roles day after day after day in the same environment. It's, um, it's a magical experience and, you know, hopefully one day it'll all happen for us all again in our own different ways. But that was, this one was special. So I wouldn't change a thing. Well, well, let's not go into any spoilers here for those that are watching that have not seen the film or not seen the <clears throat> ending. But let's talk about that ending a little bit without being Ooh. too spoilery. Uh. Yeah, how can we do this? That was such that without revealing anything, it, it is those last 15 minutes that really, as at least for, for the Nevermore committee, it's those last 15 minutes that really bring in the film into focus. It's, 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 when, the, it's, it's when the aliens, when the aliens land. <laughs> <laughs> That's another film, actually. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you for it, man. <laughs> Robert, Robert Woods is in here watching from Perth, and he's with an ideal host. And that is, uh, that is actually uh, the same concept. But seriously, that ending, phenomenal ending, did not see it coming. I don't think anybody could have predicted where the film was going. And again, not wanting to spoil anything, the concept. Savas, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about what, where did, again, without spoiling it, why did you want to go there? <laughs> Oof, that's a tough question, but... Uh... You know, like the the condition that the character has, it's a real condition. And uh, and I actually read the book about it and I told you the, the author. And uh, there were two different uh, endings that I wanted to do. And I chose this one because it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, I don't know what to do with anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it, it has been the most difficult part to shoot, to edit, <laughs> and like I think that it played really well. I think that Savas has that that sensitivity of like painting the whole thing on day to day. And yeah, when I was reading the script, I was like, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> and so I was, was like, what do you think about it? And I was like, I was expecting something like this from you, but you knew. <laughs> By the way, I, I want to say something before, like, really upset. Uh, I was really happy for William to be on set because when I was nervous, he made me not be nervous because he was joking all the time. Everybody was like, well, we're behind, we're this, we're that. But William is, is always, you know, fun. And uh, he was a great addition to the movie. I agree. I want to Sometimes personality every day on set. <laughs> Go <with me>. Ah, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> we were only there for one reason. We're all in Wrightwood every day from bloody 6 a.m. till freaking 11 at night, living, breathing that film. That's what we were doing. And there was no nowhere to go. Nothing else to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. There were no nightclubs. There was a bar, but you know, and that was, you know, that was part of the magic. So, what was the hardest scene to film? Oh, that's a tough one. Well, to me, it was. Tori. A there's a you few go. ones I'm trying to pick. <laughs> oh, that with many no, with no spoiling. It has to be a, a scene at the beginning. <laughs> right. Everyone got hard. Like, everyone, uh, like, 
I know, twist their ankle or like something happened in the first and second day that were like the exteriors, uh, like shooting in the middle of the forest. Everyone was just like falling and I was like, oh my God, another person is gonna get hurt. Like I was just suffering from everyone, like just like tripping on like everything. And Tori had to like run a lot in the in the forest. So I think that that one, that one was really hard. For me as a producer, thinking like we are in day two and we can like like lose our actress. <laughs> it was hard. <laughs> yeah, those first three days out in the forest. So there was all the, I was like laying in the, on the floor and getting all these scratches and all the leaves and all the twists and all that. I was like, all right, here we go. Um, but yeah, I don't know. There were, there were a few scenes that were definitely high intensity emotion. Um, and so through the process, I really got to like learn how to manage my energy. And like I had other scenes in the morning, you know, how to turn those high intensity emotions on the back burner and turn them down to a visual until it was time to bring them out. So that was definitely something that was difficult, but a really, really valuable experience for me on this. And William, do you have any memories? Oh, I like do. I do. A, a tough scene was the scene outside in the car in the driveway because the car alarm <laughs> going off the most obnoxious freaking car alarm you could possibly imagine in the world in this quiet little mountain town and we nobody knew how to turn the free with how to turn it off <laughs> remember that whole process to turn the bloody thing off you have to get in turn the key turn the light, and we'd all run screaming <laughs> there was also oh, listen. when the power went out if you guys remember that oh, you know, the generator that's right. oh that's right that's, that's right. right yeah they closed the power down in rightwood yeah we lost three hours <laughs> <laughs> I, I I have to say something and it's like uh, the character has a diary and like she writes everything. I have a diary on production issues that we had <laughs> each day. <laughs> one of those was like, okay, we, we don't have electricity and we weren't informed and we were calling the owner of the house like, we don't have electricity. And he was like, oh, okay. I think that is for three hours. And I was like, do you, do you know how much? It will cost three hours of productions. <laughs> so it was it was hard going to get like generators and like coming back with other solutions on how to shoot different. Of course, Brilli and Manuel found a way to light a specific moment in the movie. So we said let's let, let's shoot that. So oh well, yeah, with with LED lights, we had some battery lights, so we could like save some time uh, with this. There was a question for Dimitri. Would you like to talk a little bit about your process, Dimitri, and where you drew inspiration from for the score? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, when we first started talking with Savas, we both agreed that this particular film didn't have, uh, we, our approach would not feature any long themes uh, besides the one main theme. Uh, that was actually played on the piano as the source music as well. Uh, and we discussed early on about creating a very unique sonic environment, which is something that I always do when I start a new project. So besides the thematic or motivic identity of the project, um, I really feel it's very important to have a unique sonic environment. So I always start by creating a lot of sounds from scratch and sounds that will become the the life of the characters uh, and or the places because we discussed with some of that we wanted the house to be a character as well and for certain scenes we wanted to score with that kind of view uh more specific in terms of the sounds that we wanted we knew early on we wanted some metallic sounds both uh Unpitched, that we're going to use as percussion, and pitched, but slightly out of tune. So you'll hear a lot of bell like sounds. Um, and we wanted it to feel a little like a cell, like a bird cage, but also a little surreal, like a dream catcher. 
And another thing that we discussed was having pitch shifting sounds that feel a little like a constant downward uh, spiral. Um, what else? We also played with piano sounds a lot. Uh, I experimented with different room placements, uh, far away sounds to the isolation, and up close for Evan's uh, craving of uh, intimacy, wanting to have his daughter back. Um, what do you think, Savas? Anything that you had in mind? I think I really wish coming to your studio and doing music, man. <laughs> Uh, it was great. Like, uh, we, we, yeah, we didn't, we actually wanted the music to be uh, by character. And, you know, like, uh, as uh, Dimitri said, every room has to have a different kind of sounding. So I think that was the main idea, yeah. We have about 10 minutes left, and I thought, well, this is the first time that you guys have been together as a reunion. Why don't I hand this over to you guys? Are there any questions that you guys, now that you're together for the first time, have always wanted to ask each other? Ooh. <laughs> you guys, why don't, uh, well, you, you've, got that, you've got that what's, grin on your face. I knew it was going to be you. So. What's your next, what's your, Savas, what's your next film? You said, mentioned it when we spoke yesterday. You said you've got something really freaking exciting happening. Oh yeah. Are we, are we allowed to know about that? Well, I've been writing a lot, and I have this script that I really love, and uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm trying to raise the money for it now, but uh, I, I'm in a good way. So let's hopefully, I don't know, in a year from now, maybe we can start shooting. Uh, it's a psychological thriller with a little bit of horror elements, uh, but yeah. Everything takes two years with you, Savas. <laughs> it's two years to get the freaking film made, and then it's two years for it to get to get it perfect mm -hmm. before you release it. And I actually love that. I think that's mm -hmm. fantastic. You were a no hurry. You I wanted yeah. to wanted to get it right. That's true. Like uh, with well, we, on on editing, we had we took our time because me and Javad, you know, we've seen it so much so we wanted to take a break like a month or two not watch the movie and then come back and fix stuff so yeah, yeah I, I i wanted to be perfect it's it's my first movie and you know we worked really hard so it, it had to be perfect so yeah I, well, I, I well, think your uh, attention to detail there paid off <laughs> <laughs> hey tori so how's new mexico and what are you doing it's good. It's colder here than I expected when I drove over from California. We drove through a snowstorm. I was like, what? How long, have you, how long have you been there? Uh, just a few weeks, actually. Oh, OK, OK. Getting settled and uh, starting to audition. And yeah. Is, they, is it quite a healthy, because that's a big change from LA, because you've been building your career there and done stuff. I mean, is, it a hel um, is there a good film kind of um, industry there? Yeah, there is. The screen industry? Oh, okay. I'm coming too, and um, yeah, it's exciting. I just wanted to change the pace, and now I feel like the right time, and so I made the move. And is the weather good? Yeah, it's getting warmer, but it has okay. been snowing the past few weeks, which I'm not used to at all. No, no, <laughs> so, no. Bundling up, but it's good. Yeah, we haven't had a very good summer here. It's been really um, gray. It's gray today. I don't know if you can see. Oh my it's god. <laughs> That's a scene. <laughs> it's great. Oh, what a horrible view. I'm so sorry, William. The house <laughs> don't get excited. The house needs about a million dollars spent on it, but the view is insane. <laughs> so I want to ask every one of you what, what are you guys doing next? Like uh, any movies, any stuff? <clears throat> I'm looking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm doing i don't know about tori yeah. except i did get this really good news story nice. Yeah. Nice. full page oh i don't know if you can see it oh wrong one <laughs> there we go full page wow. look at that Bravo. that's amazing i'm famous i just don't have any money but um 
<laughs> <laughs> no, the industry here, I might as well talk about this because it's just as interesting as anything else. Um, Peter Jackson Studios are over there, over the other side of the harbor, over there, uh, where we shot The Hobbit. Now, they are being used for um, Avatar, all the sequels, but they don't use any actors. They use uh, a lot of stunt guys and a lot of green screen, and, uh, and uh, they have used background talent. But um, so that's happening down here. In Auckland, they are shooting uh, UAP, which is Unti United Ar Artists. It's untitled. Um, and it's the new Lord of the Rings Amazon uh, series. They're shooting that, but I think they're younger. They're going younger, you know, because we get the briefs because my wife's been an agent. So um, they're going younger at Slam. So, the, you know, there's not a lot of work here. I'm dying to get back to L.A. where there's also no work because of COVID. But I do miss it. I do, it is a, um, there is a feeling in L.A. of a land of opportunity, as we all know, because we all come from different parts of the world and we all yeah. went to L.A., and so there is that, isn't it, guys? You know, that you can be in a cafe anywhere in Los Angeles and there's going to be people at a table talking about a project, talking about a script, talking about music, Dimitri. You know, it is, just has that vibe. And I miss that like crazy, I have to say. But there's bits and pieces happening. <laughs> it was like yeah. a question popped up in the feed about would you consider to shoot in another language? That goes for the team. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Looks like Javier came up with that one. <laughs> any language you freaking want. <laughs> yeah. Be pretentious and say the language of cinematography. Uh, <laughs> very good. Well, for um, me, for me, I will shoot the movie in Greek uh, for sure. Uh, but, you know, if I hang out more with Manuel and Melissa, maybe in Spanish too. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> does Kiwi count? Does shooting it in Kiwi count? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Because we talk a bit different, mate. We talk like this. G'day. How are you? You doing all right? Good on you, mate. <laughs> I mean, everyone was speaking Spanish and on set, so I think that everyone picked it up a little bit. Yeah, there was yeah. a lot of Spanish on set, wasn't there? Yeah. So as we round out this conversation, any last words that you guys have to say to each other or to the fans or to your newfound audience that's now watching this film around the world? Well, I just want to say because some people reached out and they said good things. So thank you guys. If you're listening, it's it give us great, you know, positive energy to make more. And uh, thank you for that. And I hope you really enjoyed the movie. I will say, I think that learning from the experience and learning from Savas, just don't be afraid to produce, you know? Um, sometimes people get scared to do their first film, um, but just determination. I think that Savas was very focused and brought us like together to be as focused as he was. And, you know, like, don't like be as smart with your first movie. I think that's how it was great. Just choosing, you know, like a two character, one location type of uh, movie. So in the point of a producer, you have more to play when there is like a smaller uh, like budget, but at the same time, like a really strong sto story. So I will say like, choose your story um, and make sure that like, you know, like you just keep going. You don't, don't wait for like, the perfect set, don't wait for the perfect crew. Everything is gonna get together if you just believe it and just go for it, you know? Um, be ambitious, but at the same time, be realistic with what you can do. And, and another thing I wanted to mention is that thank you everybody on set, uh, every uh, production side of the movie. You guys are fantastic. And Jim, such a great festival, man. It's thank you. fantastic. Really? Oh, thank you. I, I want to say, I want to say to people that have watched the film, thank you so much. And please, if you like it, please share and tell people and share it on social media. We need the money. Uh, no, it's not to do with the money. It's just that because we put so much of our heart and souls into this thing, we really want it to be like a, our baby that then goes out into the world and goes places. And um, so... 
thank you for your kind comments and yeah please tell people and to all to Savas and Tori and Dimitri and Manuel and Melissa we have got to get together for the Los Angeles theatrical premiere we yeah. just have to I, um we've got to see each other again and it's worth it mm -hmm. yeah so that's what I'd love all right well, thank oh, well, thanks to Nevermore. Thanks to Nevermore for having us. <laughs> uh, well, I just got to say thank you to Savas and Melissa for trusting me with this role. I had the most incredible experience, and I'm just so grateful this got to be my first opportunity to have a lead role in the feature. So thank you, guys. It was amazing. You have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank all of you for taking time out in your busy schedules and in the middle of the night around the world <laughs> or in the early afternoon, no matter where you're broadcasting from. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks, you for Jen. Nevermore. Um, as people are saying in the comments, in whatever you do next, we hope you do some more horror and genre movie works and have them submitted to the festival. We hope all of you appear in films in the future that are back at the festival. And much, much success to um, Catherine's Lullaby, to each of you. Thank you so much. Thanks, and so, Thank you. Thanks Bless all us. of you. Thank you for all of your hard work. It always pays off when the film comes out the way that Catherine Lullabies turned out. Fabulous. Truly. Kia ora. All right. <laughs> all right, everybody, let's sign off. And Bye. say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. So Love to you guys. Love. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye. All right.